Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to install XAMPP onto Windows 10. So I'm going to open up my web browser and I'm going to type in XAMPP and we'll see this website apachefriends.org and we'll click here and we'll have a quick read. XAMPP is the most popular PHP development environment. XAMPP is completely free, easy to install Apache distribution containing MariaDB, PHP and Perl. The XAMPP open source package has been set up to be incredibly easy to install and to use. So basically you're getting a development environment onto your local computer where you can start programming PHP, you can use Perl, you've got MySQL database and you've got Apache web server so you can start building and experimenting with software coding on this particular platform so normally you would deploy this onto a your your applications onto a web server running on linux but you can run and install this software here on your local machine to experiment and write code and then do the deployment to your web server so here we can see three options xamp for windows xamp for linux and mac os so select the relevant version i'm going to click on windows and it's going to download in the software automatically you can see it's downloading here if that doesn't happen you can click on this link here okay the software is downloaded I'm going to click on it to launch it and we'll wait a few seconds for it to boot up a screen has popped up asking me to confirm I want to install I'm going to click yes So a little message has popped up here and it's just warning me not to install the software on C drive program files because it won't have any sort of permissions to write. So I'm not going to install it in that location. As default, it wouldn't install in that location anyway. So I'll click OK and I'll click Next. And I'm just going to do a standard full installation of all the software. And I'll click Next and I'm going to install it as the default directory which is on the C drive called XAMPP. And we'll click Next and we'll click Next. You can ignore this pop-up, we don't really need to look at this. So we, we just minimize this while it's installing here. Okay, the software is fully installed now and it's asking me um, if I want to start the control panel so I'm going to start the control panel now so I'll click finish and we're going to select uh, American language or English and here we can see the XAMPP control panel so from this control panel you can see that there's various services available there's Apache, MySQL, FileZilla which is FTP and a few other services here and you've got kind of two options now either you can have Apache and MySQL installed as a service on Windows so when you load up Windows the next time these will start up automatically your Apache web server and MySQL or you can click these buttons to start them so if we were to click start then Apache will be live now and if we click start here on MySQL MySQL now will be now live and you can stop them as well by simply clicking the button to stop them if you tick these two options here when you load up Windows the next time around, these services will start automatically. So if you're planning on doing a lot of web development, I mean, you can close this window. You can go to Start menu. You can scroll down to XAMPP here. And if you click on XAMPP Control Panel, you can start them manually by just clicking here and here. So if you're planning on doing a lot of web development work and you're going to be constantly working with MySQL, uh, PHP and Apache Server, then you may want to install them as services. Alternatively, you can use the control panel to launch these um, services from this particular control panel. Okay, so now that we have these services running, we can go to our file explorer and we can go to this PC and we can go to the C drive and then XAMPP here. And here you'll see htdocs. So whenever you're working on projects, you want to store your files in htdocs. Normally I'll create a subdirectory and then put my projects inside of there. I'm going to demo that in a little while. But for now, what we'll do is open up the web browser. So we'll just create web browser and we're just going to go to localhost. And when we go to localhost, that's looking at the 
the local machine so this is the installation of Apache and it's looking at this dashboard as default so here you see the dashboard yeah um, so what we need to do is first of all secure PHP my admin so if I click on PHP my admin it's not asking for any password or anything like this it's just default I can access it and that's not really too secure so we want to secure this so we're going to go to user accounts here and then we're going to go to find this root localhost here and we're going to edit privileges and we're going to change password here and we need to enter a password so I'm going to put in a password make sure you remember your password let's just type that in one more time and then we'll click change where are we click go here go okay so the password for the root access has been changed and now if we go back to PHP admin you see that there's an error here so we need to fix that error so what we do is we'll go to the C drive we'll go to exam we'll go to PHP my admin and then we're going to edit the config file here this one here config inc.php so we're going to right click and you can either open that with notepad or if you've got notepad plus plus you can use that as well so we'll open it here and we want to go to authentication and change config to cookie and then we want to put our password in here and then we'll save it and we'll close this and if we go back to PHP my admin and refresh we'll see that it's going to ask us for a username and password the username will be root and the password will be here now we can access uh, PHP admin without any without any issues so let's go back to localhost and I'm going to move this screen to one side and in this directory here we'll go to exam and then we'll go to htdocs and we'll create a folder called projects and inside of here I'll create another folder called project 01 this is our first project so we can go to now projects slash project 01 and we can see the root directory here so if we go inside of here and we can create a txt file so let's and as default Apache server will always look for an index file so it's always going to look for the index file that's the root file that it always will look for index.html so if I hit enter it's going to ask me do I want to change the extension I'll click yes and we'll right click on this edit with notepad and we'll say this is a first page test we will save this close it and when we refresh we will see that it's looking for this index.html and this is a first page test so now we've got a full working environment uh, we've got access to our database as well so if we were to go back to localhost we can access PHP my admin here and we can set up a database if we want to start setting up a database and we've got our root directory we've got our projects folder and our sub projects so when i start to build more projects i'll create more project subfolders and normally i'll name this folder the name of whatever project i'm actually working on i've just called it project 01 as an example um, and that's pretty much xamp set up ready to go uh, and there's not really much else i can explain here so you need to go and experiment do some reading up on the documentation and I hope you find this tutorial useful okay we'll close this all down in this case I'm going to stop Apache and MySQL 
like I mentioned before, you can run it as a service. And if you run it as a service, it will always boot up the first time uh, you load Windows. It will always be constantly running if you're planning on doing a lot of uh, dev work. Okay, I hope you find that tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.